morning, folks. This is the pre-welcome welcome. welcome. Uh, we are lucky to have with us today Kyle Kembenjong. I misspelled his name in the bulletin. The fourth letter is, in fact, an M. Uh, uh, we're so fortunate to have him here from the UWM guitar department. Uh, the three pieces that he will be playing today for Prelude, Offertory, and Postlude. The first is a Prelude from the first keyboard partita by Bach. He'll be playing Debussy's Arabesque for the Offertory, and the Postlude will be Toccata from Sandy's Portrait, which is by Sergio Assad. So let's welcome Kyle Kembenjohn. <laughs> Holy Spirit, let us dream of the world where there is justice and everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough. The world will change when we dream God's dream. Come, let us dream God's dream together. Let us worship God. Would you join me in our call to worship? Provident God, your love brings us birth to birth. Your providence adds our lives, and by your promise, you return to dust. Creator of the universe, in your grace, you promised us that those who die will still live in your presence. Their spirits have simply been transformed, but have not ended. Accompanied with Jesus Christ, who died and rose from the dead, and now lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit. May they rejoice in your kingdom as you unite us together. Would you rise as you are able and join us in hymn 562, Take My Gifts.
Provident God, your love brings us to birth. Your providence guides our lives, and by your promise, we return to dust. Creator of the universe, in your grace, you promise us that those who die still live in your presence. Their spirits have simply been transformed but have not ended. I pray in gratitude and hope for my family, relatives, and friends that have gone before me, and for all the dead known to you alone, accompanied with Jesus Christ, who died and rose from the dead and now lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit. May they rejoice in your kingdom as you unite us together again this sacred morning to worship you. For our Gloria this morning, we're going to do this in the three parts. So I'm going to ask this side of the church to start. The choir will be part number two, and the folks over here will be part number three. I think we know this one by now. Here we go. Ready, and... Alleluia, 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 
Good morning, Plymouth members and friends. Good morning. Good morning to those who are watching us on live stream. It's that time in the life of our church where we lift up our joys and our concerns. Who should we pray for this morning? You know, we have some prayers. Uh, we uh, lift up, uh, we pray for uh, Rick Clark as we pray for his, uh, the life of, and we thank God for the life of his sister, Joan Philipson. We also are thinking about others in our community this day. We think about um, um, Mike and an, an orchard this day. Um, we also think about uh, Xavier and Isaac Sawyer. We pray, continue prayers of healing um, for, for Sue as she heals and for, we think about uh, Bruce who's here with us today. We think about, uh, uh, Bill Trichel, uh prayers for his sister, and so many others. We think about, I think about Karen's mom as she continues her healing journey, and we think about Lucy. She's here back with us this morning, and his her brother Dan. Um, are there others that we lift up this morning in the life of our congregation? Yes. Okay, sure. I think to lift up. Family. Okay, so we're lifting up uh, the Klein family this uh, this morning. He was a UCC pastor um, in the Sheboygan area, and then also uh, part of the Moon Beach family. Yes. Um, thanks, Teresa, for mentioning my mom. I I just want to her name is Thelma Thidwal. Um, she has been diagnosed with some form of cancer. They're still trying to figure out what uh, type it is, but it's probably four stage and um, she's, she's having oxygen, um, she's having problems breathing, so I don't anticipate good news soon, but I wanted to just add a little bit of context. So appreciate your prayers for her and my brother for peace during this time. I would, go ahead, Bill. Okay, sorry, here back here at the choir. And as Bill's coming, I'm just so grateful. Uh, Nancy is back here with us this morning and her family as well. We're so grateful. She's such a joy to our congregation and so we're so grateful that she is here this morning. Yeah. I would ask that you keep in prayer my aunt, Shirley Clifford in Cambridge, Illinois, who fell this past week in her home, she's 94 and now also has pneumonia. But apparently she's fairly stable, but in rehab. So please ask for prayers for healing for her. She'd like to go home again. Yes. So prayers for Shirley Clifford, who's uh, the aunt, um, and um, she's 94. She fell this week uh, of Reverend Jane Terry. So our prayers are with Shirley this uh, week and her healing. Anybody else? All right, well, let us pray. Creator God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you as we celebrate the lives of those who have passed before us and we see their faces on display and we see the ribbons that are tied in front of us. We remember them this day. We remember their gifts to our lives, this world, our families, and this maybe even this congregation. We're so grateful the way that you love and you care for us. Be with us as a community of faith. That God allow us to move knowing that we are connected, that we are never alone. We pray the prayers of those who are, there's so many people in our congregation who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. Their families and daughters and sons and people and individuals that are connected to those who are feeling the transition that is happening. Maybe it's a difficult diagnosis. Maybe it is a long stint, a road ahead for that person. But God, be with those families. 
let them know that they don't walk this road alone, that we are here together as a family. We are the body of Christ. We pray this day individually for those, maybe we don't even know their concerns, but God, that you know them. We pray for those who are watching us on live stream, that maybe they feel disconnected from the community at hand, but letting them know that, God, that you hear their prayers, you hear their concerns, that they are seen and known by you. God, we pray for our nation and our world as we enter this election season and not knowing the outcome, and there's so much fear and concerns about on both sides what is to come. That God allow us to see each other, the God that allow us to vote with our conscience, but also walk in love as we see our neighbors as you see us. God, we're so grateful for all that you have done for us. Be with those in our developing countries and around this world and our nation and those in our backyard, our neighbors, even maybe we don't even know their concerns. We pray for the places where there is war and discord, that God, that you know the names and the concerns, that God be with those people. Be with people, maybe we don't speak the same language, that we don't even walk their same journey. But God, that you know their concern. Be with the people in North Carolina and the southern region as they are putting their lives back together and it seems like it is a slow process. Be with them that you see and you know them and they are not alone. We're grateful for all that you are doing right now, allowing us to walk with gratitude and peace and joy in the coming week. And for this, we give you praise. And now we pray in the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this is offer, uh, offering time. Is that time where we give what God has blessed us with. And so at this time, as the offering plate comes forward, we also ask that you pass the red key pass. Let us know that you are worshiping with us today.
prayer of dedication says. Let's read it together. Merciful God, we bring our offerings as a response to your call, a step in faith to follow you more closely. Use these gifts to spread your love and light, helping others to see your grace and mercy. Bless our giving and open our hearts to see the needs around us so that we may serve with compassion and humility. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so I have an update. I, first of all, I want to thank you last Sunday for all of those that helped in the kitchen and, um, you know, in the dining room for round to it and the Sunday before. Um, the kitchen looks a lot better. And thank you again um, for doing the mulch the Saturday before, you know, two Saturdays ago. I think the grounds look just beautiful. So, you know, we always want your pledge and your money, but we also love the volunteer work, and we're so grateful. So thank you for that. Okay, so if you remember last Sunday, we were at 30, I think 31,000. And you know, this is like kind of the, kind of where we're, um, uh, what, saying thank you for all the pledges. And of course, Elaine and I are like, oh my gosh, we only have $31,000. Um, but you know, it takes time. It takes time for everyone to think about what you want to give next year and what you can afford. Um, so this Sunday, there's 43 pledges, 43 families so far have pledged. And we're at 163. So that's really that's really in one week we've come up with that many more pledges and that much more money. So thank you. We really appreciate it. And if anyone wants to donate right now and you haven't had the chance, the box is here. I guess that was the idea that people could come forward and give your pledge and put it in the box. And otherwise it'll be out in the foyer later. Or not the foyer, the here, I'll put the box right here so people can, maybe you can fold it up and put it in there. So thank you, thank you so much everybody. are coming up let's uh, read together um, we'll do our litany of dedication of our stewardship pledges <laughs> almighty and everlasting God we give you thanks this day as we gather the pledges of support for your church in the coming year we bring them before you with eager anticipation and hope for those whose lives have been touched by your spirit who have increased their commitment For those who are responding to your creative grace by pledging for the first time, we give you thanks and praise. For those who are tithing in and even exceeding a tithe, we give you thanks and praise. For those whose lives are in transition or turmoil and who feel they cannot pledge, but who continue to be a vital part of our community, For committee workers who have labored in this effort to enable your people to make a pledge of support for your church. We give you thanks and praise. That each of us and your whole church become more faithful to the call of service in Jesus Christ. We ask your continuing guidance in the air. That though these pledges may emerge as real gifts, thereby enabling the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ to move forward through this congregation 
and the church universal. In the name of Jesus Christ, we commit ourselves to this action. Amen. that today after church um, we invite everyone to come to coffee hour that's really important this is a way of just uh, fellowshipping with one another and then um, after church is uh, the final uh, 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 series in rereading the Bible again um, after worship in the lower study so where's Jane is she in here still okay that's fine but she um, we invite you to come down for that us uh, uh, book study and then a reminder about the Plymouth Women's Book Club. If you are a member of Plymouth Book Club, just raise your hand that we want people to know that there are members of our church who are part of that or, I mean, that are in this place. Chancel Choir and Plymouth Chorale are on Wednesday, and you can always see Donna and ask more questions about that. Our Jericho Walkers who stand at the ice building reminding people that they are seen and heard. Um, if you raise your hand if you're part of that committee as well. And then, um, then we remind ourselves that next Sunday is a special service, is our All Saints Sunday worship and a healing service. And more importantly, it's also where uh, we fall back. And so we remind ourselves of the time change, you know, so remind ourselves daylight saving starts uh, next, uh, next week, so next Sunday. Um, and here, here are all of our announcements this, um, for this day. And, and our children will lead us in our worship after that, after we hear our hymn. Please stand for Touch the Earth Lightly, if you're able. And just a quick announcement that we're also in desperate need of uh, food volunteers for Guest House, which is Saturday, November 2nd. We've only had a couple people sign up, so please check the sign up out in the lobby afterwards. Thank you.
When are we going to be finished? I want to work on my costume. I like the table and all the candles. Pero no queremos, hermanos, estar desinformados acerca de los que han muerto porque no se entristezcan como lo hacen otros que tienen esperanza. Porque así como creemos que Jesús murió y resucitó, así también Dios traerá consigo por medio de Jesús a los que han muerto. Por eso, os anunciamos por la palabra del Señor que nosotros los que vivimos, los que quedamos hasta la vida del Señor, no pereceremos a los que han muerto. Okay. What else does the Bible say? I think that means it's okay to feel sad, but the joy is part of remembering too, right? All kinds of different feelings are going to happen. You're both right. It's okay to have sad feelings and happy feelings when you remember those who have died. Así que ahora tenéis dolor, pero os volveré a ver, y vuestros corazones se alegrarán, y nadie os quitará vuestro gozo.
God's love and how to show love to one another. How to let our light shine. That means we take time to remember people who have died too. Okay, that makes sense. Another way to remember that we are not alone. Lots of us have loved ones who died and we miss them. Setting up this ofrenda at church is a way to remember that we are all connected to God and, one, and to one another. We take time each year to create a beautiful reminder of love words. We carefully select photos and favorite items to help tell their stories. And we laugh, cry, and pray together, together with one another and with God. Remember that the Bible tells us in John chapter 11 that Jesus cried when <coughs> Lazarus died. Sadness is part of how we remember people we love. Together with God, we have comfort, we have love, we have compassion, and we have peace. We invite everyone to come forward after the service to look more closely at the ofrenda. Together we will share in the love and light of Christ as we lift up our loved ones, seen and unseen, here on earth and apart from us in death.
Well, he's tuning. I just want to let you know he has a recital here next Sunday. I believe there's some flyers out in the...